Are you stressed and filled with anxiety like I am? Maybe in a bit of pain from that car accident you had a few years ago? Well, the sponsor of today's episode, Hempville CBD, has us covered. They have the highest quality products created by chemists and doctors. Hempville carries everything from CBD to THC dispensary grade without those despicable dispensary prices. Order your Delta 8, 9, edibles, and vapes along with the THCA flower and get free shipping when you spend $50 or more at HempvilleCBD.com. Check out the link in the description for more details. Welcome to The Film of Science, the podcast where we discuss all things movies. Join us as we dive deep into the latest releases, revisit classic films, and explore the art of cinema. Whether you're a film fanatic or just love a good flick, we've got you covered from Hollywood blockbusters to indie gems. We'll be breaking down the storytelling, the cinematography, and everything in between. So grab some popcorn, sit back, and get ready for some cinematic magic. If you like what you hear, please consider subscribing to our Patreon at patreon.com slash we offer tiers at the $1, $5, and $20 level, where the $5 tier will grant the ability to request films for future episodes. This is the Film Assigns, where movies are more than just entertainment, they're an experience. They're an experience. All and welcome back to another episode of the Film Assigns. Thank you for tuning in. I am joined today by my great peeling friend, Lucy. Hello, everyone. You can join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for brand new episodes of The Film Stein. Some recent episodes include though, The Exorcist Believer, When Evil Lurks, The Passion of the Christ, What's a Christ, Find Out in Our Episode, The Sound of Freedom, or oh, I guess it's just fa- Sound of Freedom, isn't it? It's not The Sound. Yeah. I, I say that just off the cuff. <laughs> the, uh, they're missing it. Of Mice and Men, the 1992 Gary Sinise. Bless you. But today we are discussing... The classic of classics, one of the greatest films ever made, period. The 1993 Lacey Hallstrom's What's Eating Gilbert Grape. His name is pronounced Lacey? I think so. Not Lassie? Yeah, I don't really know. <laughs> don't really know. It's not his real name. His real name's Lars. So his name's actually Lars Hallstrom. So. Why don't we call him Lars? That's his stage name, his DJ name. All right. I'm excited to talk to you about this film because it's got two of our favorites, right? Leo and Johnny Depp. Yes. Right? They're big dogs. Big dogs. And it's really cool to see them come from sort of humble beginnings. You know, this movie's not super grandiose and bombastic and nuts and, you know, overtold in any way, but it's still funny enough, one of one of their best films for sure. Yep. And I know you love it. I know... You introduced this film to me, I think, <gasps> actually. Whoa. Yeah, years ago. Yes. I-, I think. Just give me credit. Dang. <laughs> Just say I did. <laughs> I'll give you credit. Thank you. And I liked it then, but I like it more now because I guess I I'm, I pay so much attention to dialogue now that I just can't help but I can't get this movie out of my mind on that level because it's, it does it uses dialogue in such a funny way. A lynching way, if you will. But I'm very excited to hear what you have to say about this film because it's a it's a very loved film, right? I, do you know that? You realize that? I it's, mean, I think so. Yeah. Everyone I know that's seen it has loved it. Yeah, it seems like it's just universally loved. Yeah. And that's good. I'm glad that's the case. Uh, it didn't make any money, but, you know. Oh, man. Maybe on the back end home releases and stuff it made a good bit of money but box office wise it did pretty bad we'll talk about that later but when i think of movies that you like or even when i just think about this specific movie i always think of you (gasps) because you know that and swan princess and maybe some others cats garfield no not garfield cats definitely cats i think of la la land because you <laughs> are so vocal about your hatred towards it. but So I'm very interested, though, what you have to say about this movie. What do you? What are some of your gut thoughts? Well, let me start off saying that I've seen this movie about four to five times. That's not very much for you. Mm, that's true. I usually tend to watch a movie until I can quote it. So I thought that was a lot. But yeah, you saying that now makes me realize it's not that much for me. You're right. 
But um, the first time I watched it was in high school. And we had just covered Of Mice and Men. And this was shown to us by my, you know, all-time favorite teacher ever in, you know, high school or, or grade school and college or whatever. Miss Stanley, which, you know, she passed away last year. Yeah, in 2022. So that sucks. But after we covered Of Mice and Men, the book, we watched this film just to get some parallels there. And I remember really liking the film. And I'm in agreement with you every time I see it I just love it even more and now that you know I have my new film Shinigami Eyes oh my god this film is fucking amazing it's even better than you thought yes it's funny when you love a film and you're not even sure exactly why and then you know time passed you see it a dozen times over your life or whatever and then you know at some point you can finally kind of identify exactly why but that first time you're like you know, I love that movie. It spoke to me, but you don't, you know, you may not think about it ever again. Or you may not think about it until you watch it again. Mm -hmm. And it, after doing this, it becomes very clear why this movie is as good as it gets. Yeah. It's maybe a perfectly made movie. Yeah. This movie has a lot going for it. Not only do I love the story and just the kind of emotion behind it, the performances were great. You have not only great performances you have particularly outstanding performances and just a great job with some of these characters i mean the set designs were great everything about this small town was great the cinematography did the film justice by setting the mood but nothing gets past the just the plot the story of what um lassie here lacy whatever is trying to tell us what's he trying to tell us there's a lot of themes here do you think there's an ultimate kind of punchline though no i do you think so i think there is i think it's quick and brief like a lot of things in this movie but i think that's just part and intention in the movie of every, every you know just what life is so you think there's a big overall yeah to be a little more present and to kind of you know take day by day by the balls every you know every day okay you know, not trying to reinvent the wheel or anything, but just, you know, appreciate, love, be more present. Because I guess in the very beginning, you know, they're waiting for the RV trailer things, right? To come by with Arnie and Gilbert, <laughs> right? Mm hmm And in the beginning, I feel like Gilbert's there for Arnie just because he's, he's caretaker mode. You know, he's been in caretaker mode for God knows how long. Right, he's yeah. Since their dad died, yeah. Since their dad killed himself, probably before even you know in this small town, you know, not lots to look forward to and everything. That's true because his dad wasn't very present. And I love that there's this echo in the back of the movie where I feel like Gilbert's looking forward to the RVs with Arnie. Not you know, of course, because of Becky, but it brings a little more compassion and passion to to his character. Yeah, that's what I was going to say if I had to pick an overall theme here, compassion with er, with um Arnie being disabled, with his mom being overweight, with him just dreading life, with his mistress and her husband and just having a little bit more compassion towards each other. But I like I like what you're saying. Because even in the movie poster on the wiki page, he said it says life is a terrible thing to sleep through. Mm -hmm. so yeah okay and, ba and, and becky basically tells him to wake up kind of reminds me of spike lee's do the right thing in that way where for different reasons i guess that's a little bit of a social commentary more so than than this this is a much more of an existential film of just not being so caught up in the kind of the programming of what makes us human but kind of remembering that you're you're here you're a being you think, therefore, you are. And I also like the very beginning where he's talking about how bored the uh, the town is and how there's just nothing eventful that goes on and it's just a town that where he lives, where all these people live to kind of support the uh, very beginning of not really having compassion even for the you know the neighbors of, of where he exists. That describing Endora was like dancing to no music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And our, our late Gilbert 
into the movie Gilbert wouldn't be saying that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One other thing I really like about this film is I believe it's a almost a Lynchian take on a movie that's like the Flor- the Florida Project. You remember that movie? Oh, that was the worst movie ever. It's got this it's charged with this extreme innocence and a uh, slice of life kind of kind of storytelling. But in Gilbert Grape, we have these very particular characters. You know, they're very odd in a really specific way and they just they give you they make you feel a little uneasy, not quite in a the same way Twin Peaks character might, but a in a this is almost feels like real life, but it's just a little strange, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think that's very cool. I think that's so cool. And then I love the the happenings that go go on in Gilbert's life or happen all in between little bookends of, of death being brought up over and over and over again. And it's just it's very like an innocent Lynchian thing I'm getting here. And it's very cool. It's very cool. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I make a joke that every good movie is not a Lynchian movie, even though you say it is. But no, I definitely get that here. And there's definitely some very unsettling scenes in this movie that I can see being Lynchian. Like when Ken Carver drowns, you know, there's they joke in the town that the wife murdered him. Did he have a heart attack? Did he commit suicide? We don't know. But we see him bent over the kiddie pool. And that's just a weird ass thing. Like a kiddie pool is what? One foot deep, if that? Yeah. But not you... full of water. Like it's maybe six six, eight inches yes. when it's got water. You don't fill it up all the way. That I can see that being uh a Lynchian kind of scene. And maybe when When they bring the burger barn in and it's pre made, that's almost atlanta before atlanta but very much inspired by david lynch yeah it's just like what that's just it's just like the weird touch of surrealism you're just like i (laughs) this is weird this is all of a sudden very weird even the way they the the cadence of the way they talk about the food land the fact that it's called food land yeah food land is just a little off and weird in that way too i think that's very neat when did the book come out I'm not sure. Oh, I see it here. 1991. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So that that could uh that could very much have some Lynchian kind of thing going on. Like directly. It may not just be a time and it may not just be part of the movement. It may have some kind of direct influence. Some very direct inspiration. Yeah. Okay. I could see that. So I want to talk about my favorite scenes. The first one is when Arnie's playing with the grasshopper and he chops his head off with the mailbox. Another weird thing. Yeah. And it it, it really shouldn't be because he's, you know, ostensibly a kid killing a bug. But the way he does it next to what everything else <laughs> is to come, you're just like, you never recovered from that quite right. Yeah. And then the next scene is him just losing his mind. And he's like, Gilbert, I've. I killed him. Yeah. I killed him, Gilbert. And he's, I mean, that's probably one of his best performances next to uh, Leo's best performance next to the end when he finds his mom dead. But um, I just, everything about just his childlike nature, but then you feel bad when you kill bugs. I don't know. Maybe you don't. But when I was a kid, I completely felt if I didn't have to kill a bug, I was not going to kill the bug just because I, I I felt kind of, you know, bad. And the way he does it is just, what? Why would you chop its head off? And then in another scene, when Gilbert's at the convenience store where he works at, Arnie has a jar full of grasshoppers. So they're, they're his friends. He carries them around. He feeds them. So... All that together is just, I mean, it's fucking cool. Yeah, it helps sell the character and and it feeds into that, that Lynchian thing that just and not everything is as it seems. But it is, though. You know, it's just we were, this really weird balance in this movie that's very unique to this. I've never seen anything quite like it. Because, like, 
I don't know. How would you describe it? I kind of want to describe it innocent lynchingism. <laughs> it's like a slice of life kind of film, very coming of age oriented. But this doesn't happen in your life. Yeah, but this doesn't quite happen like yes. this. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good way. Maybe because it's not because everything that happens is very simple. Yeah, and it's not macabre enough to be straight up lynchian, but it's just it's right there. It's kissing it, and it's it's really. It's a really cool space to be in. I really, really like it. I couldn't see anyone else. I couldn't find anyone else say something like this online either. Oh, I really? Was okay. Yeah, oh. I, I couldn't either besides how good of a film it was. But then they proceed to tell you a synopsis of the movie. Yeah. It's or, like that's not, you're not telling me why you like it. You're telling me yeah. the plot. <laughs> yeah, those are your your basic ass editors, you know, just trying to get little... I don't know, fucking articles out so they can yeah it's like some... i like this movie because johnny depp plays this yeah. character and leo plays this character it's like oh okay and they and then they you know they i guess they'll talk they it's pretty common i guess for you to see like they'll talk about the the performances of the actors and be like how they're some of the best in their entire filmography and everything and it's like okay well that's i guess a start <laughs> but but yeah what's another favorite scene of yours Oh my gosh. And this next scene just absolutely, it, it kills me. It just kills everything. I cannot watch this movie when I am not in a good mindset because you'll, this, you'll scene, cry. this scene right here <laughs> will completely destroy me. And it's when Gilbert leaves Arnie in the bathtub. Like right when he leaves or when he gets back? When he gets back. Okay. When he, you know, he... he he leaves him in there. He goes and does his thing with Becky, comes home and goes to sleep and wakes up in the morning. He's going to go brush his teeth and he hears water splash. It's amazingly done. It, it is. It might be my favorite scene or favorite kind of setup to that bit. It's it's crazy. And that's just another thing that it makes you feel uncomfortable in such a way. That's just so hard to. To pinpoint yeah like me bringing it up right now i'm like oh man i'm gonna try not to cry on here because it <laughs> it just it tears me up and then he traumatizes him he doesn't want to ever take a bath again it's a it's a great scene it's a great scene yeah who puts that in a movie who does that it's awesome setup because he goes and has such a great time you know, he's finally opening up. This is for Gilbert. He's taking he's taking some time to himself. Finally, you know, after how, how God knows how long. And he's having, like, this is such a good moment for Gilbert. It, and it just, com it, it, it doesn't completely come crashing down, but it definitely. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't completely come crashing down in the sense of, you know, Arnie didn't die. But Gilbert leaves, right? This is when he leaves. Yeah, he kind of has a resignation of, I can't do this anymore. He does yeah. kind of. Or is that after? He... Yeah, I mean, he's 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 done. He, And, you know, Gilbert never leaves. Gilbert's always there. Gil Gilbert's reliable. He's the man of the house. I, I, I mean, that's probably that weird feeling I'm feeling that he didn't do anything wrong. He just, he just wanted to hang out with his girl for, you know. However long he wanted to. And Arnie's about to turn 18. He's a man. He can take a bath by himself. And oh my gosh. It's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. Yes, it's heartbreaking. And it's it's heartbreaking in the strangest way because it makes me feel weird. And I think that scene makes me cry way more than the end. Yeah, I think... I mean, I agree. I agree. I I don't think the end's quite as sad. I feel like <laughs> the end is kind of that lynching thing. Like they don't, <laughs> they don't want their mom to become weekly news. A spectacle, yeah. They don't want her to be ashamed in you know wherever she's at. They want to respect her last. <laughs> and so they leave her upstairs <laughs> and catch the house on fire. <laughs> It's so, it's awesome. It is awesome. Oh my god! But it's just so, it's just slightly off color too. It's just so weird. And it's just, it's just weird. I mean, it's probably the, 
second weirdest part as far as like just how they behave Mm -hmm. in the in the in the world of gilbert grape i think the first i think the weirdest thing is the burger barn thing that's very weird and like dystopian and just like the most out of place thing here but it's not out of place because it's it's just a fast food thing that you know you could almost see that (laughs) happen in real life you know it's like so grounded that you're like has that actually been a like a thing that someone's tried some fast food restaurant has tried you know Maybe. so yeah <laughs> it doesn't feel totally out of the, the realm of possibility it's i guess at least now i don't know about 1993 uh, but it ages really well that yeah. that thing does and i love that all four kids are cool with it they're all in agreement you know no one's like why would we do that to the house you know mama love this house daddy built this house you know you know how some people can get yeah 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 all of them are in agreement and they're like, yes, let's do this. They're all ready to burn this house, really. They're all ready to restart. Yeah, I guess there's a little bit of a, not really so much a little bit, but a, an element of letting go here too that they mm-hmm. <laughs> ceremonially kind of kind of go all out with. Yeah, because even Arnie is ready. Yeah, and it's, I guess it even beca- it's even a little weirder thematically because you feel like if it was such a ceremonial thing, like it feels, it wouldn't matter if everything else, if all the stuff inside burned up or not. But they take everything out, too. It's just like, <laughs> what if it rains? <laughs> what do you guys do? It's really it's really cool. And my last favorite scene, and then this one's just for my mo- my own amusement, is when his boss sees him coming out of food land with the cake that his sister had pre-ordered it's just the the betrayal on the boss's face just but just the type of person he is he's he's gonna get eaten up inside with all this guilt and they just make eye contact and no one says anything at least i don't think so Mm -mm. and he goes on with his day I, I, I couldn't even imagine being in a situation like that. I would be trying to explain myself away. I would be I, I would be telling him, Arnie ate the cake and he messed it up and he pushed my sister down and blah, 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 blah. Like, please forgive me for coming here. Oh my gosh, that, that's such a great scene. It's also kind of a lynching thing, but it's more so in the direction of, remember that movie Funny Games we watched? Mm-hmm. I think it's... Is that a Swedish movie? I think. I think so. Is this guy Swedish? Yes. Hmm. And that there's this like weird element of awkwardness that you're just like, you just want it to end. And the big one from that camp is obviously Gilbert and Miss Miss Carver's uh, husband and Gilbert's relationship. Oh my gosh, that was funny too. Because that balance is almost that it never comes straight to a head. Beautifully so. But it almost feels like it will in Gilbert's favor. <laughs> and so I'm just like, uh, but it's just so awkward and excellently executed. Oh, my gosh. I forgot. I completely forgot about that. Yes. And I mean, he gives him a ride back to his wife's house after he, you know, confronts him. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I guess. And then he fucking dies. And then he dies. And one of my favorite things about that whole, there's a couple of things I like about that that dynamic, that relationship he has, is in the beginning, it feels like it's just something to do. Mm-hmm. It, it doesn't feel like it's anything for Gilbert other than he's just in a bored town. He's bored. He doesn't have, you know, that's just, it's something he found. It's a situational ship or whatever they call that he found himself in. Yeah. And I love that, that he, it just, it feels like it came out of boredom, especially, you know, with the very, very beginning, the first five minutes of the movie. But one thing I like even more is when him, when Gilbert and Miss Carver are talking, you can hear the kids, her kids, or Mr. Carver in the background and stuff. And they're talking, if it sounds like to me that they're, they're speaking for Mrs. Carver to Gilbert. Like there's this meta level of di- of dialogue happening between the three, I guess. Like when Miss Carver is getting ice cream, she sees Gilbert and she's like kind of looked at him, looking at him seductively, and mm-hmm. not, you know, she's just, I guess that's 
she's always looking at him seductively. <laughs> but her kids in the in the back are saying stuff like, I want the big one. And it's like really weirdly the master volume in the scene. I'm just like, that's so weird. Oh, and then okay. when there's a, there's like, it happens like three or four times. It might only happen with Miss Carver, which would definitely guarantee what I'm thinking. Where when he brings, when Gilbert brings back Mr. Carver and Miss Carver, you know, is crying with the cookies burning and shit and everything. And he, she runs to the truck. You can hear Mr. Carver, like as the, like the master volume talk about, I just want to play, you know, he's being real kind of. Yeah. 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 Ag- aggressive. Not, vi- not really violently, but he's like trying like forcefully kind of yeah, wanting to play and stuff. He's and like, I this- bought you guys this play with it and it just it feels like that's what mr Car- mrs carver is thinking about gilbert like i that's just i just want to play with you like what's the big deal you know kind of thing and it was just like who fucking thinks about ha- delivering like a triple layer of emotion on this side character like this and i don't i don't think it happens to gilbert i think it only happens to ancillary characters i think i think it happens I want to say it happens to someone else too, but I can't. I can't remember. I want to say it happens in the. It might be with Mrs. Carver again, though, in the diner. Yeah, I, I think it happens that. there too, but I can't remember what it was. And I was just like, "This is insane storytelling, filmmaking. You can't get this anywhere else. This yes. is this is on a completely different level. This transcends lynchianism. All right, this this is unbelievable filmmaking." Well, I want to, because there's such a interesting kind of quirky cast of characters here, I want you to tell me your favorite few, not in any particular order, but if does anyone kind of, I guess mainly the ancillary characters, but you know, of course, talk about Arnie and Gilbert. Gilbert's my favorite, first and foremost, I can say that. Gilbert? Yeah. Okay. But the mama is my second favorite character. Yes. She's, and this is her movie debut Mm -hmm. which is very cool but she's just she's just one of many elements in the movie that make me that just scream david lynch to me but she's you know she's this big woman who speaks really mousy and it's just it's she's so just small feeling but she's a she's a big lady and she you know they kind of run with that which is awesome i love how they run with with her size in the house kind of slumping down and then and then <laughs> them have them being in the basement and not wanting to be oh in the basement gosh, and stuff yes. it's just like this how this yes. is so cool but i loved i love her her small and gentle voice and when she it's a it's a little i guess predictable in that way that you know she's going to kind of have an outburst because of that smallness she has in her and it, it comes across really kind of like a lot, like kind of not scary, but you know, you know how you, you have a parent or whatever, you have a, an adult that doesn't get mad. And when they get mad, you know, they're really mad oh, kind yeah. of thing. That's my dad. <laughs> that kind of thing. And I, it, it's super effective and she did a wonderful job and she's, she's arguably my favorite character really. Cause she's, I don't know. I guess she's more surprising than Johnny Depp. So it, it hits home a little harder for me, mm-hmm. but she's, a, she's wonderful. Yeah. I, I think I have a hard time choosing a favorite character for sure especially a side character i mean i really like mr carver i like i like everything that he does here i like everything that gets done to him i like that he's desperate to talk to gilbert but we you know we don't go, we don't get anywhere with that besides the suspense of is this motherfucker gonna beat him up? Is he gonna get caught? Is he gonna say anything? And you never get answers. Yeah, and you never get answers. I guess we, I guess he dies, so we can't get answers. But I love, I love, love, love that we just do not get, we don't get anything out of that other than the anxiety. Yeah, <laughs> I, I love that his wife is cheating on him, doesn't really care for him, but then we find out she kind of misses him. So it's like, okay, you know what? I, of course you do. That's your husband. And, you know, his kids wanted a pool and he bought him a kiddie pool. I mean, several times he talks about how he does everything he can. He's just doing everything he can for this family and it goes unappreciated or unnoticed or whatever. So I really, I really like his character a lot. I don't know if it's my favorite, but 
he definitely comes to mind first. Yeah. Um, you know, besides Arnie, of I don't I don't even know if you can even count him just from every single thing he does. I also like the friend, the best friend. Uh I think his name is Tucker. With the curly hair? Yeah, that's Tucker. I like him too. Oh, I love him. He's great too. He's great here. And I like him and Gilbert's relationship and how he hates that Gilbert makes fun of his mom. How Gilbert's always making these fat jokes. You know, he lifted that kid up to watch his mom through the window. And his friend's like, you have to respect your mom, dude. She's your mama. Like, why are you being so mean? Why are you being like this? Why are you being so hateful? And we all need a best friend like that. Also, a best friend that's going to go in your basement where your dad hung himself and take care of what needs to get taken care of for you. And he knows a lot about construction. A lot about like a handyman kind of, yeah, like electricity, construction. Yeah. And you're just like, it's just, it's just, it's one of those, another one of those things that just feels a little bit out of place for this world, but he's like hyper. He's got a hyper specific kind of focused mind on this particular thing, which is, and then Gilbert doesn't, he just doesn't care. Like, yeah. <laughs> or at least he doesn't seem to care. And it's just, but that then, was great. Then his friend wants to work at Burger Barn. At Burger Barn. Yeah. And wants to work himself up and be a manager. And... Which is weird. It's, it's so <laughs> weird. I'm like, but okay, that that makes sense. You're not that type of person. You're not giving off those vibes, but I, I like him a lot. What do you think about the Undertaker um, mortician guy? Their friend Bobby? Is that Bobby? Yeah. I like him too. You know, he doesn't stand out quite as much as Tucker because he's in less scenes. But I love that he drives around in his business car. I don't yeah. know what you call those cars. A hearse. Yeah. He drives around in, in his hearse. Does he have a dead body in there? <laughs> I, probably. <laughs> while he's making a pit stop to get lunch. Yeah, and I like how he's bitching about he doesn't have any work in the beginning because no one's dying. And then he asks some random person about... He, Mr. Carver. It's Mr. Carver about yes, his mom. About his mom. How's your mom doing? It's, oh, she's good. It's oh, awesome. man. It's one of the Sorry. greatest lines in the whole movie. And he's such a side, side character. He's not even the best friend. He's <laughs> the second best. And it's so great. Yeah. I, I, God, it... it even the side side character is great. I think the character that probably stands out the least or maybe I like the least is Becky. Yeah, Becky's a little... She plays a very specific role to open up Gilbert. Mm -hmm. And to, to kind of bring him back to Earth. So she has a lot on her shoulders. She can't be too much, I guess. But I do... I like her cadence a lot and her weird obsession with bringing up death this whole movie is death oh that's true he's got a friend who deals with death oh yeah, that's true <laughs> i think she's the one that probably brings it up the most in the sense of it's okay to die yeah but she's got a really the very lynching thing about her i should say really specifically the very twin peaks thing about her is the way she talks she's got a weird cadence about how the the, the way she fucking talks it's it's off it's very weird and i don't know if i've seen her in very many things she's in christmas vacation that's all i really remember her from mm -hmm. when she was a youngin i probably like her the least too but she does a fine job with what she is in the movie i guess i like the sisters probably the least but they're they're like hardly part of the picture at all yeah so not, I don't know, not really fair, but... I like Ellen, the younger one, the teenage one. I think she's hilarious with all the attitude she gives and the few lines she has and how she's just so embarrassed of her family and she's over it. Yeah. And she's obsessed with the way she looks. I like her. But then we get even less of um the other sister. One thing I like about Arnie is when he's getting into stuff like getting on the water tower it seems to be a real event in the town mm -hmm. there's so there's such this town is so boring that when this kid is climbing a water tower everyone in the area just 
watches to see what's going to happen. Which, I mean, I guess I would too, but it's just, I guess it's, it seems like there's such a focus on it because there's nothing else going on. Mm-hmm. They just gather around to watch the freak show. Yeah. And that even happens when the mom goes to the jail to, to get Arnie out of jail. Yeah. They all gather so quickly too. How do they do that? Small town. <laughs> Yeah, how'd they all hear about it so quick? <laughs> they don't have cell phones. <laughs> Not like today, at least. Yeah, and to follow up a bit on that, the scene where where Gilbert basically asks Becky to hang out, and she's like, well, what do you what do you do here? He's like, nothing. She's like, there's got to be one thing you guys do around mm-hmm, here. What yeah. is it? And he takes her to go get ice cream. And everyone is there. Like, that's where his sister works. That's where the best friends were eating ice cream. That's where Miss Carver was. It <laughs> yeah, was yeah, so that's funny. True. That was that was good. That was a good little bit. Yeah. It all builds into why I guess I think that that's the ultimate theme point of the movie. Because I did some, I did see people saying that the movie's kind of pointless. Oh no, you could even argue that this could be about family responsibilities. And take it from the point of view of, of Gilbert's family. Gilbert's is the dad. Amy is the mom. They somehow have to all scrape in and provide and take care of take care of Arnie. If nothing, take it from that. But I don't you know, this movie is anything but pointless. Yeah. Movies don't need to land anywhere specifically. We just need a little character development. You know, that's kind of the core of storytelling anyways, I think. Mm-hmm. There's just so much character here. Yeah. That is taking people by surprise. Yeah, maybe. We have we have Gilbert, we know his thoughts, we know where he works. We know everything about him. We know Arnie, we know his issues, we know what happened to their dad. I mean, we know a lot about them. We know their uh personalities. And that's very rare when a director gives you that much in one film. So maybe that's what they're noticing here. This is like my life. Yeah, because you're developed. <laughs> <laughs> it's pointless. <laughs> and is it such a terrible thing for a movie to be pointless? Can't it just be an experience? I'm all down for movies being an experience. That's why I like action movies. Oh, yeah, that's a good. They're, action movies are often pointless. I am there for the experience. Do people like action movies? They keep making them. All right, then. <laughs> Top Gun, is that pointless? No, that's that's not that's not an action movie either. That's a character drama. Okay. <laughs> well, what's uh, Fast and Furious? There you go, there you go. Yeah, that's like one of the highest grossing franchises of all time. There you go. Nothing wrong with being entertained yeah. by film. Yeah, that's definitely a way to look at it. But just know what you're watching, mm-hmm. you know. Have your expectations where they should be. <laughs> yeah, I guess if you want to watch a pointless film, watch the uh, the Florida Project. Yes, there you go. It's completely pointless. It's just a slice of life. A slice of Orlando life. <laughs> the movie's also got a scene of a house burning down. So? <laughs> What's the point? What's the point? <laughs> it's pointless. Why are we still here? <laughs> How do you feel about the title? Yeah, it's a weird title. It's from the book. So I wonder if the book goes into some kind of further explanation regarding the title, but it should be applicable here. And there's no question mark. So they're not asking us, or they're not asking in general, what's eating Gilbert Grape. They're saying, I'm going to tell you what's eating Gilbert Grape. Yeah, it almost feels like it's a, like, what's up? What's eating Gilbert Grape? Like, what's up, Gilbert Grape? Yeah, but that's, like, maybe a different way to say it in some (laughs) some neck of the woods. That's what it feels like to me. Like, what you been up to? Mm. That's how I've always read it. What's eating, Gilbert Grape? (laughs) I don't know. I've always read it that way. And then we get that answer. (laughs) It it, is answered to me, you know? That's good. I like that. That plays into the slice of, what do you call it? Slice of life? Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I like that. See, I just, I just took it from the angle of his mom's, you know, fat, and his last name is Grape. 
So the word eating (laughs) is there. Yeah, I guess. And I'm trying to put something together there, but some kind of pun, something along those lines. His mom's not a focus enough, I guess, for for The shame is. The shame is sort of. It's It's kind of ancillary, tangential, but. I mean, this dude's got to deal with a disabled brother and a mom that's the talk of the town. Yeah. But he has to do it. He ha- he he doesn't have time to worry about the shame. The f- but the funny thing about that is until he meets Becky, it he's it kind of he feeds into it. He lets the kids see, but he at the same time he doesn't want his mom to feel him and shamed. He doesn't want his mom to feel like she's a burden, you know, to be embarrassed and stuff. He doesn't he it is it's almost like he's really not that embarrassed by her. At least until he meets Be- meets Becky. He's not embarrassed or he is embarrassed and then he meets Becky and then he's not embarrassed. He isn't embarrassed. Then meets Becky. Then meets Becky. Now he's embarrassed. Now he's a little more compassionate about the situation okay. for okay. for her sake, you know? Okay. I don't know if that's what's eaten <laughs> is, I mean, if... <laughs> Like, what's eating at Gilbert Grape, maybe? Like, what's bothering him? Maybe. That's a, that's a phrase, yeah. People also say we're eating good when good things are happening. That's true. Well, just in general, when the good yeah, things are true. happening. So there's something to it, obviously, yeah, for sure. Maybe it's all that combined. Good job, yeah. whoever wrote this book, screenplay, all of it. What do you think about that scene where Gilbert beats the shit out of Arnie? For a brief second. <laughs> when he's trying to get him to take a bath, then he won't. And then he gets frustrated. And that's right before he leaves, right? Yes. I think he runs out right yes. after he does that. Yes. That's where he leaves. I like that scene. I like that Gilbert's finally showing us some emotion. He's finally alive. But I hate that it's taken out on Arnie. Because you don't hit Arnie. I know. It's a really great complicated conflicting kind of situation because yeah you're happy for gilbert finally being brought down to earth because i think just right before becky said something like i once knew a guy who was dead on the inside yeah basically (laughs) and you know it's right on the nose but it makes the message very clear you know uninterpretable you know that he's that that all right gilbert's here he's you know he's a functioning human being now he's got an emotional state but that's matched with him finally collapsing or finally kind of bursting with emotion and taking it out on Arnie. And so, you know, we love Arnie. What? But we love Gilbert. Now it's all of a sudden very complicated. Yes. Oh, my God. That's what I'm feeling. Complicated. Yeah. I didn't know how to feel. Because I, I can't hate Gilbert. It's good for him. Yeah. Finally. Finally. Yes. But damn, my boy Arnie, you don't touch Arnie. Arnie. He even says that to multiple times, right? Yes. And he lays it. <laughs> he lays it on him. He lays it on him. And then he goes and tells his. No, and then he leaves. He runs Arnie away. Arnie leaves. Arnie runs away. Because where else is he going to go? Gilbert's his man. Gilbert's his best friend. Yeah. I did like that he goes to Becky, and Becky gets him to finally take a bath. You know, he's. He. He's comfortable enough around her to be able to do that. And then on top of that, I love that when, the, you know, they finally get reunited after that scene, Arnie tries to beat the shit out of him. Yeah, that's cute. Yes. And he, he kind of smacks him a little bit. Yes. I'm like, oh, shit. You know, it's not, it's not super playful. <laughs> but I, I like that, you know, and, and, their, and their little duo here, that means I forgive you. Yeah, I liked that we saw Arnie with Becky, and I like that we saw that little bit kind of far away. We saw it from Gilbert's perspective, and we saw him jump in the water and stuff, and mm-hmm. you know, kind of like we're we're spying on them. We are spying on them because we don't know they're there, right? Or they don't they don't know we're we're there. Yeah, and I like that it just goes completely uninterrupted. Gilbert, it feels like Gilbert wants to go over there. He does, right? He wants to. He sees Arnie's fucking by himself. Or at least was briefly and stuff. He doesn't want Arnie to be by himself. He doesn't want him to get hurt. And uh, but it goes uninterrupted. And then Becky sees him, which is hilarious because 
you half expected Becky not to see him, but like the fucking reality of the situation is you're probably going to see that person behind that bush. Like that's, you know, and I feel like in any other movie you wouldn't have, she wouldn't have, you know, quote, seen him. It's like, no, you fucking, he's like 25 feet away. You're going to fucking see him. (laughs) You're going to be creeped out. (laughs) Yeah. He's, he's so close in a land of nothing. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good point. I like that. I like that too. Yeah. I, uh, I guess, um, Another bit I really liked was the exaggerated, but not so exaggerated. It lives in that weird space of not quite Lynchian, I would say, but just kind of almost theatrical in that. The melodramatic, I guess, Mm -hmm. but not quite melodramatic. It's like lives in that fun space of where when the mom is walking in around the house and the house is (laughs) the the, the floor is kind of flexing underneath her and Uh stuff and and they're all under there. And then when... When Gilbert's in the living room, he kind of tiptoes and stuff, and it's oh, around yeah. that scene, and it's really fun. It's a really fun scene. Yeah, they didn't have to go that hard. Yeah. But they did. Yeah, I like that a lot, too. I like that he's he's being he's going to be careful. He doesn't want to fall through. I like that a lot. It was really cute in a weird way. <laughs> I mean, I liked probably every scene with the mom in it, but I especially also liked the scene where she meets Becky because she's like you know she's embarrassed or she you know she feels like a burden she doesn't want people to see her she doesn't leave when she obviously can you know Mm -hmm. because she's ashamed I don't know you feel her weirdness about meeting Becky when they when they are meeting yeah it's just really awkward and it's I don't know it's really sweet I like it a lot too and then it, I mean, they really kind of linger on that in that you feel that she's going through a similar process all of a sudden as Gilbert. She went, she, she's, she went outside to go get her little boy. She has this party going on. She's meeting Becky face to face. Things feel like they're starting to look up for her. You know, even though, you know, she's still the talk of the town or whatever when she goes to pick up Arnie. It feels like not all was lost with this lady. Yeah. And then she goes upstairs at the very end and you're like, damn, how long has it been since she's done that? You know, we're like all of a sudden focusing in on mama Mm -hmm. and she gets in bed and doesn't wake up. And it's, it's pretty, it's pretty heart wrenching. It's not, for some reason it is not a tearjerker to me. Like it doesn't ache my heart, but it, no, it's not because she had the chance to try right before she died. She had, you know, she had a talk with her son. They forgave each other. Yeah. I'm not leaving you anymore. I'm sorry for what I've done. And she apologizes and says, I'm sorry I've been such a burden on you guys. Like, don't don't think I don't notice everything you've done. Yeah, she gets some closure, doesn't like, she? Like, yes, exactly. She gets some fucking closure, and that's. I think that's why that scene's not completely devastating. Yeah, I, I, she kind of takes one for the team in a mm-hmm. way. It's like she is anticipating it, and she wants to die in the comfiest part of the house. Yeah, I like that. That they gave her this kind of redeeming, not a redeeming quality, but maybe like a like a push to make her life better. Yeah. Right before she passed away. What do you think of the scene where they start fighting at the dinner table and Arnie's like, he's dead. Dad's dead. Oh my God. That was (laughs) hilarious. That was so funny. Not my favorite scene, but it was so funny. And Gilbert's like, just kind of enjoying it. I don't know. It's, I don't know. It's so chaotic. It's a complicated, kind of conflicted thing of emotions there because it's really getting to the mom and the sisters and then Arnie doesn't really understand (laughs) on the right level and Gilbert is smiling. Yeah. It's just like, what am I supposed to feel here? (laughs) Like, this is... See, there's a weird, innocent, kind of, you know, macabre thing happening there that is is just it's just right it's such a good flavor of movie i've ne- never there's nothing else like this there really isn't yeah but i mean it's still what happens it feels natural yeah 
especially in this family or in this town. <laughs> yeah, because when you're at the dinner table, your mom could be fighting with your dad and you just think that's so funny because it's just a funny situation to you know be in or your brother says something stupid and your mom's getting on to him and i mean it's it's just so chaotic i i like it which you know that leads to them finding out that the house is bending <laughs> i was reading that leo prepped a lot for for the audition first of all before um during this movie, I, I was reading that they were considering getting an actual mentally challenged person to play the role of Arnie, but that Leo's performance just blew everything out of the water and they went with him. And that after he was casted, he went to go um, study mentally challenged kids at a specific school. I don't know if they mentioned it, and I did, I just didn't write it down. But um, he just kind of practiced their mannerisms and watched them when they got angry, when they got happy, how they would act around it. And um, that's a lot of dedication for a 17-year-old. And that's awesome. I mean, that's why he is the actor he is today. Yeah. And that's why he's as loved as he is today. Yeah, that's awesome. I saw that he was nominated for Best Supporting Role, too, because of that. Did he win? No. Just nominated? Yeah, he was. He didn't win until Revenant. Oh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> that was like the big joke of yeah. the internet. Give Leo his Oscar. And he was nominated so early on. It's so funny. God dang. How did he not win this? Yeah, I, I don't Who know. Who beat I, him? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, apparently he lost to Tommy Lee Jones for The Fugitive. You know that movie? No, I know Tommy Lee Jones, but yeah, I don't know that movie. Yeah, I guess it's a thriller film, so I haven't seen it. Yeah, the Oscars don't like... Good performances? Real art. Ah. They didn't even nominate RRR for... That's true, that's true. International film, so I don't know. Yeah, I guess I'll have to see this movie to see if if it was even a close vote or something. I will say Tommy Lee Jones is my favorite character in No Country for Old Men. He's a side character. But... All right. I mean, Leo here's playing <laughs> something he's not. I mean, I know everyone plays something they're not, you know. Yeah, it's the illusion of acting. Yeah. Johnny Depp's not a pirate. <laughs> <laughs> Could have fooled me. But he's a, an awesome Captain Jack Sparrow. So that's kind of silly to say, but I was reading that when they were shooting scenes, people would come watch and um, they would get compliments, like the crew would get compliments on um, doing a great job hiring a mentally challenged kid for this role. It was <laughs> like so believable or whatever, you know, <laughs> it was so funny. <clears throat> Good job. You guys work with, you know. So inclusive. <laughs> so inclusive. <laughs> Way ahead of your time. That's funny. Yeah, and then they started hiring Seth Rogen. He's mentally challenged. Uh, I, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know where you were going here. I just wanted to end this with a quote from Roger Ebert. He says, movies like What's Eating Gilbert Grape are not easily summarized. They don't have that slick, high-concept, one-sentence peg that makes them easy to sell. Maybe all I've said, Roger Ebert, still leaves you wondering what the movie is about. But some of the best movies are like this. They show everyday life, carefully observed, and as we grow to know the people in the film, maybe we find out something about ourselves. The fact that Hallstrom is able to combine these qualities with comedy, romance, and even melodrama make the movie very rare. It echoes that thing I like to bring up every so often. And I am I guess I'm proud of myself to see Roger explicitly really say it, that great movies kind of transcend drama and, and the medium. Because this film, is, this film is on a completely different level. Yeah, and it's so hard to, or maybe not, I don't know. But it's... It definitely takes some critical thinking and just appreciation of the, some appreciation of film to be able to distinguish between 
films that are trying to do this and films that think they're trying to do this but are getting nowhere and i'm glad someone can notice that and point that out about this movie because i mean yeah from the first watch i knew i loved it didn't know why i mean even now i i still don't know why it just captures a great film it or it it, it just captures my attention it captures my emotions like everything it's so perfect I think that's a really fun space to kind of live in and you can't pinpoint why exactly all the time like from beat to beat in the movie but you can kind of you know okay dialogue characters color cinematography uh, you know everything else we've talked about in this movie it it's really satisfying when you like a movie but it's not obvious why because it it makes you find something out about yourself maybe like roger here says it builds character within you. You're now you're part of the movie, you know, in a way, because mm-hmm. so, it's all about yes. developing in you. Yeah, the movie is the movie experience. It's all about you. It's all about finding yourself in characters, being entertained, right? Learning something, maybe growing from it. Yeah, growing. No one says it better than Roger Ebert. Good job, Roger. And maybe me and you. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well man do you have a budget guess for me i do my budget guess is 14 million how do you come up with that i have no idea <laughs> <laughs> I, I knew it couldn't be in the you know 100s of course sure. not yeah of course not especially for its time you know uh 10 just seemed too low i know that's a huge range 10 to 100 so i'm like okay maybe 50 and 50 still seemed too high so I went 30. Hmm. There's a little Newtonian method happening there. I like that. Uh-huh. Sure. What you said. And if you take inflation into account, then that's 14 million. <laughs> Let's go. Inflation. <laughs> inflation. What well, says here that it was 11. So oh. you were in the right mindset. It is it's it is old enough that you do want to take into account inflation right when you when you leave the 2000s you're like you know it's a different era of of money so yeah so i get that yeah but it went on to make 10 million so it did not hit box office numbers but it's gone on to be a cult classic and i'm sure with streaming rights and dvds and stuff and everything like that and renting of course it uh has i'm sure made its money back three times over it at least <laughs> not much though. Oh, man that's it, unfortunate it's but... a it you know i you know i bet you gilbert grape lives in this space of everyone knows it's a good movie but no one's seen it kind of thing you think so yeah kind of like how everyone remembers fondly on the gamecube or the nintendo 64 but I no mean... one owned it I don't. <laughs> I don't even know what you said. <laughs> what What's a GameCube? GameCube? Did yeah. you play on a cube? It yeah. It was a cube <laughs> with a handle on it for the to go, like a McDonald's Happy Meal. Nice. <laughs> but hopefully, our director here can have some of that satisfaction that yeah he knows he created this yeah. Hopefully, he's not egotistic and represents or money is a representation of his success hopefully he doesn't think that way because this film is phenomenal well he's not american right yes so he's probably very appreciative all right (laughs) (laughs) he's good he has he appreciates the arts and working with these real life people and learning from them and learning from the experience i'm sure he does you know he's not american so bets are safe with that yeah and apparently he made some movies that i like too maybe some kind of guilty pleasure movies i don't know we should hachi mm, i have to check that one out hachi oh man i'm gonna cry i'm gonna i'm gonna cry my little eyes out loved by the internet so and i might have to check that one out i think when hachi came to netflix me and this girl in high school like watched it around the same time because it was like you know just added or something yeah and i think others too around that time watched it just coincidentally 
and we were just talking about how sad it was. So it it's a movie that really sticks out in my mind around the time I watched it. And I don't know if I've seen it since. Hmm. I just know I cried a lot. He also did Dear John and Safe Haven, which are... are are those Nicholas Spark books, or are they just Nic- Nicholas Spark adjacent adjacent <laughs> <laughs> movies? I don't know, I don't but know. those are definitely guilty rom com pleasures. Or I've seen... I guess they're not. Are they rom com? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like the sad not... rom com. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what those are called. They're just. Let's see what Wiki calls them. Romantic war drama. That's for dear John. And Safe Haven is a romantic drama fantasy thriller. Whoa. That's okay. So just romantic dramas. And looking at his filmography, it looks like Gilbert Grape is a little bit out of place. I, I don't know, but I haven't, I've seen Dear John, I think, but nothing else of his. And it's just, I don't know. By name alone, it seems like. Maybe because there's not a dog in it. <laughs> yeah, there's no dog. Well, man, thank you for watching this movie with me. And I guess thank you for exposing me to this movie you're very welcome yeah and thank you for this talk it's a good talk do you have fun i had fun remember you can catch us every monday wednesday and friday for brand new episodes of the film on patreon at patreon.com slash film come by give us a dollar leave nice reviews on google podcasts apple podcasts our newly launched youtube Ooh. nice reviews comments grocery lists anything you want to post will be acceptable if you want anything read on the episode, go over to our Patreon and just post something. I think you can do it freely. So just, you know, come over there and post something freely. That's fine. If not, give us a dollar. Yeah. But until next time, take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And that's a wrap for today's episode of The Film of Steins. Thanks for tuning in and joining us on our cinematic journey. We hope you enjoyed our discussion and gained some new insights and perspectives in the world of movies. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast on your favorite platform, especially Patreon at patreon.com slash and follow us on social media for more film-related content. We love hearing from our listeners, so if you have any feedback, suggestions, movie recommendations, or book recommendations, please feel free to reach out to us. Until next time, keep watching, keep loving the magic of movies. This is The Film of Steins, signing off. Grrrr. <sighs>